president's temporary ban has resulted in protests and a flurry of legal maneuverings, it is sitting well with key supporters. When then-candidate Donald Trump campaigned in Minnesota two days before the election, he singled out the state's history as a hotbed of terror recruiting as a reason to halt immigration from certain countries. The thousands in the crowd at Minneapolis airport hangar cheered loudly. For his supporters, this temporary refugee ban is simply President Trump delivering on a key campaign promise. Joining us right now is Janet Byhofer. She is a Republican National Committee woman from Minnesota and also a Trump supporter. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me, Esme. Uh, this is a good experience. All right, well, great. Uh, thank you so much. Let me ask you, in your view, how is President Trump doing? Overall, and based on my travels and conversations in the state, and I have been to the southeast corner, talked to people in the southwest, in the northwest corner, all around, including the metro area, Trump supporters, and even people who were not initially on board with him are thrilled because he's doing what he said he would do. He is really taking action. And that is a good sign if we want to go ahead and make the progress that we need to make as a nation. All right. And you are, as a Republican National Committee woman, you are one of three people in Minnesota that really represents the Republican Party here in Minnesota and then also to the party in Washington. Let me ask you, uh, I covered an event last week that I don't recall seeing anything quite like it, a gathering of f almost 40 religious leaders, top religious leaders of all faiths, mm -hmm. Muslim, Jewish, Protestant, Catholic, were all there to denounce this travel ban. What are your thoughts about that remarkable calling and, and unity amongst the leaders of faith that were at this hearing? I think there's two components there, Esme. First of all, we have to remember that this is a temporary halt. And the nations on this particular halt are nations that were listed by Obama in 2015 and passed for a six-month temporary halt. And nobody said anything. So now Donald Trump delivers on a campaign promise, and we all know our immigration system is broken. When something's broken, the best thing you can do is stop, assess the situation, and then figure out what you need to do to fix it. We have people overstaying visas. That's unfair to people who want new visas and to come in. So when you have a system that is not following the law in some instances, but not all, and when the rules in place are not followed, then you're telling the world that the rules don't matter. Yes, people get caught in the middle, but well, there has to be something to fix our system. Everybody wants to come here. We cannot take everybody all at once. So we have systems, and those systems are what people are concerned about, and that is what President Trump is trying to get a handle on. All right. Do you agree with the way this proposal was rolled out. There's been much criticism of it being implemented on a Friday evening without uh, proper instructions to the people who had to enforce it. And it has resulted in what many people across the nation, including prominent Republicans, say is absolute chaos. Unfortunately, that was a Friday evening dump. But we have gone through Friday evening dumps for the last eight years. So the issue is, should it have been done differently? Yes. But part of what we're dealing with here, Esme, is involved in some, not most, but some of the people who want to come here also want to destroy us. So they will move. If we give an end date on something or a start date, they will move in the meantime, which is to their right, and that is what he wanted to halt. But should he have done something differently? All my reading from both sides of the aisle say, yes, it could have been done a bit differently without a long lead time. Quickly, uh, the latest CBS News poll on his approval ratings, 40% of Americans approve of him, 48% disapprove of the job he's doing. That is the lowest approval rating of any president so soon after an inauguration. Quickly, well, what's going Well, I on saw there? an approval rating of him yesterday at 54%, so I think it depends on the poll who gets asked and how the question is phrased. I saw 54%, so what can I say? You know, so it go, it's going to depend which, which poll you work with. All right, and obviously you say that you're hearing great things around the state. I am hearing wonderful things around the state. People are absolutely thrilled with this. And for the record, this is the closest we have come to flipping Minnesota with the exception of Ronald Reagan. And there is a and lot of excitement about true. it. that is very true, very true. All right, All right. Ms. Byford, thank you so much for coming thank in. Thank you for having me, Esme. I appreciate it very much. All